Welcome, nerds! Hogwarts Legacy is finally here after years of waiting. I know we're all excited, so I'm just going to go ahead and jump straight into it. Today, I'm going to show you how to find all the common rooms as soon as you're able to freely explore the castle, and I'm going to do it without spoiling anything. I won't do any of the puzzles or anything like that, none of the story. I'm going to start us off over here in front of the library, because this is the first point in the game where it kind of stops holding your hand. And then we'll run up these stairs that you're probably familiar with already. Now, the quickest way to get to the common rooms is through that doorway over there on the right. I'll show you that at the end of the video, so don't worry. But in my mind, the Great Hall is kind of the focal point for everything in the castle, so the first thing I'm going to do is head us over there. Now, I gotta say, it is so nice to finally get to play this game after seeing the leaked footage of a Harry Potter game four years ago that seemed too good to be true, up to the trailer a couple years later, then the state of play last March. But anyway, the castle is so well done. I've spent about four hours already just exploring, and I feel like I've barely scratched the surface. But we're gonna finally get to go through these doors ourselves that we've been seeing in the books and movies for about 20 years now. And it's gonna put us right in front of this beautiful staircase that we're then gonna go up. We saw a little bit of this in the gameplay showcase already, so we know once we go through this big wooden door here, it's going to put us right out in front of the hourglasses that keep track of house points. And on the opposite side of that is where our journey begins. That's where all of the house common rooms are. But first, I just want to take a peek inside the Great Hall because we're here and why not, right? If you don't want to see this, just skip forward about 10 seconds or so. We've got this little entrance room with the suits of armor that seem to be alive. And then through the big doors here, we've got... The Great Hall. I just love the ambiance in the Great Hall. You hear all the chatter from all the students and everything. We've got all the tables, the Slytherin table, Ravenclaw table, Gryffindor, Hufflepuff. But we're just going to go back through this door here because that's not what you're here for today. Now, all of the common rooms are part of the Grand Staircase. So we're going to head right in and start with Gryffindor. We're going to go up the stairs to the left of this statue. And we're going to run a little ways and we're going to take the first left that we come to. Well, maybe not the first left, but once we get into the main spiral staircase area, that main left right there. We're going to go past the statue of the one-eyed witch, points to you if you know where that leads, and then down the hallway with the reddish brown wood. Up there is where we're going to be going here, so we're just going to take this flight of stairs up. And then as soon as we get to the second floor or third floor or whatever floor we're on here, we're going to take a left. Down the hallway, you'll see the portrait of the fat lady, and once we get up there, she's going to swing open for us because we are playing Gryffindor. Now, long-time viewers will know that I'm a Ravenclaw. I decided to go with Gryffindor for my first playthrough because I heard a rumor that there's more side quests for Gryffindor than anything else, especially Ravenclaw, but that's where we're going to head next, so we're just going to backtrack down here, back to the entrance of the Great Hall, and instead of going to the first left we come to, we're going to go up the stairs, continuing around the spiral staircase, and we're going to go to the first landing that we find. There's no other options, it'll literally be the next one that you come to. You'll know you're heading the right way when you see a hallway that's completely blue. Then you'll go into that hallway, passing all of these nerds with their nose in a book. Didn't you just say that you're one of them? Yeah, I know, shut up. And then we're going to go through the doorway, up the stairs. And we're just going to follow this staircase around and around, all the way up to the top. There's nowhere else for you to go once you're in this stairway, so you'll know you're in the right place. And then once you get up to the top of this landing, you're going to see it right away. Straight up at the top of the stairs, there's the bronze eagle with the brass knocker. And if this is your first time up here, you'll see a Revelio page telling you how to get in. But since we're not playing Ravenclaw, it doesn't make a difference. No matter how many times you aggressively knock on the door. And then I get this weird visual glitch up here. I'm not sure if it's intentional, but everything gets all foggy. But anyway, moving on to the next common room, we're going to make our way back down to the Great Hall once more. We're going to take a right at this statue this time. And now looking at the bottom, it says that it's the reception hall. But after we get back down there, we're going to take the next possible left we can. And we saw this in the gameplay showcase. You're just going to go around and around again, all the way down this time until you get to the bottom. The first thing you're going to notice is right there on the left is the portrait of the bowl of fruit. You're supposed to tickle the pear to get in there. It turns into a door handle. But at this point in the game, it hasn't explained how to do that. So we're going to go right around the corner here, right to the entrance of the Hufflepuff common room. And this one is probably my favorite to visit as a non-member of that house, because when you get too close to it, it sprays you with vinegar. It's the only room that really has any interaction that I've found anyway. Now, short of needing a shower, we're going to head back up to the entrance of the Great Hall for our last common room. For Slytherin, we're going to stick to the right side of the statue just like we did for Hufflepuff, except we're going to go straight past it, right into the center of the Grand Staircase. I love how the stairs kind of just materialize right in front of you. It definitely beats how in the first movie where they were just constantly changing. But anyway, we're going to go down and around, all the way down to the bottom of the staircase here. The Slytherin common room is the only option for this staircase, so you'll know you're going the right way. We'll go through this big wooden door and then straight to the right, where you can immediately see all the snakes on the floor. Nice and if you're a Slytherin, I'm guessing that the doorway just slithers up when you walk up this way. I tried using Revelio a couple times and nothing really happens. But past the Slytherin common room is going to be the quickest way to get from the grand staircase to the library. You're just going to go up these stairs and then past the statue of the Kelpie, hanging a right up some more stairs, and then you're just going to follow those all the way up to the top, out of this doorway and straight across the bridge. 
You can see there on the right that we're already back to the entrance where we started at the beginning. And as we go through the doorway here, I turn around and you can see that that's the doorway I had pointed out originally in the beginning. If this video was helpful, I would appreciate it if you stupefied the like button and consider subscribing if you haven't already. I'll be covering Hogwarts Legacy content for months to come and hopefully longer. But that's all I've got for you today. I will catch you next time, nerds.